Welcome back. In today's video, I will discuss the Edmund degradation method. It is used to find out the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain of proteins. Given the DNA or RNA sequence, ORFs can be extracted, and protein sequences can be determined. But there are chances that proteins may be unknown. That's why we use the Edmund degradation method in protein sequencing. Edmund degradation, developed by Pear Edmund, is a method of sequencing amino acids in a peptide. Before we start, I would like to refresh your memory on protein structure. Proteins are made up of polypeptide chains which are in turn composed of amino acids joined by peptide bonds. Different types of amino acids are combined to form a polypeptide. On one end, there is a free amino group, and on the other end, a free carboxylic group is present. The side with the amino group is referred to as the N-terminal, while the side with the carboxylic group is referred to as the C-terminal. This is because of the structure of amino acids. If you want to know more about amino acid structure and peptide bond formation, check out the video by clicking on the I button. Let's suppose this is a polypeptide chain with N and C terminals. Whenever we try to find out the amino acid sequence in a polypeptide, we have both options. N-terminal amino acid determination and C-terminal amino acid determination. The only difference is in the N-terminal amino acid determination. The A amino acid will separate out first, then B, then C, and so on. But in the C-terminal amino acid determination, the E amino acid will separate out first, then D, then C, and so on. In this video, I will use the N-terminal amino acid determination method. Different methods are used for this purpose, like the DNP method, the Dansel method, and the Edmund degradation method, and I will use the last one, which is Edmund degradation. In this process, the N-terminal is labeled and cleaved from the rest of the polypeptide. At the end, labeled amino acids can be detected by different techniques. This is a sequential process. Amino acids are labeled and cleaved one after the other. This method can handle less than 30 amino acids. Following are the steps it's involved in the Edmund degradation method. The first one is coupling, where Edmund's reagent binds with the peptide chain. The second is the cleavage reaction, where the labeled amino acid is cleaved from the rest of the chain. And the last one is the conversion step, where the unstable molecule is converted into a final and stable form. Let us look at an example to better understand the entire process. As you may know, amino acids have four groups. An amino group, a carboxylic group, a hydrogen group, and an alkyl chain. Each amino acid has the same three groups, but the R group is unique. In this peptide chain, the first amino acid is here, the second is here, the third is here, and so on. In order to determine the N-terminal amino acid, we must first separate the first amino acid, then the second, and finally the third. First, consider the entire reaction. I will go over it step by step. To label the first amino acid and separate it, we add phenyl isothiocyanate. This is also known as Edmonds reagent. This reaction takes place in mildly alkaline conditions. This reaction produced a phenylthiocarbamyl derivative. This is an intermediate form that, when exposed to heat and an acidic solution, 
transforms into an analanothiazolinone derivative and is extracted using an organic solvent. It is acidified further to produce the highly stable phenolthiohydrantoin amino acid derivative. This is the final amino acid that has been labeled. It is easily identified using chromatography techniques such as HPLC. In the same way, the second amino acid is removed, then the third, and so on. Let us go over some of the process's limitations. Proteins that have blocked N-terminal amino acids cannot be sequenced through Edmund degradation. There are unmodified CYS and glycosylated residues that give a blank cycle. Poor results are obtained when impurities, such as amine-containing chemicals, interfere with Edmund's reaction. Don't forget to subscribe for more informative videos and click the bell icon for the most recent ones.